I hope you've enjoyed the show as more uh, as much as I do. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm the member of Ban Generator, a new media arts and design collective. Uh, or as we've recently been, been labeled a uh, new media boys band. We are guys uh, responsible for this project uh, called the Decaudian that hang, has hang uh, out here. And uh, we are currently developing it further with um, some other guys from Hedoka. And um, as the Decaudian is obviously present in the title of my speech, um, I'm going to briefly introduce you to the subject. Nonetheless, I'm not going to focus solely on this device. I'd rather talk more about all the things around it. So, the main uh, concept, the key idea behind this project was to create a new means of expression in electronic live music. And I'm aware of that, that's kind of a bold statement. Uh, you've all just got a chance to judge by yourself if we succeeded or not. Uh, but we found that all of those knobs and buttons commonly used uh, in um, common uh, musical controllers are not so compelling in terms of gestural expression. So we've asked what could we do to change that. And, you know, generally speaking, most of the time, gestures are kind of a byproduct of performing live music on a particular instrument. And we've asked what could we do to change that to reverse this hierarchy, to reverse this order, and to make those gestures as a first-class citizen, and then transform them into the sound and music in abstract but visible way. More than that, we didn't want to restrain the performer to use his own, own hands only. We wanted uh, him to be allowed to use a whole body movement, so to go around and even below the controller, which is, you have to admit, is quite usual, unusual thing. And from technical point of view, the decoder is quite simple. Uh, it's a um, wireless musical controller. Yes, it's really wireless. Um, <laughs> you have to believe me. <laughs> In terms of communication, we're working on a floating device based on anti-gravity, but um, for time you have to you know, bear with it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it consists of 12 infrared distance sensors. Uh, enclosed uh, in a skeleton, ah, and Arduino microcontroller, which is a brain of this device that is actually so easy that even your grandma could use it. And uh, everything is enclosed in a skeleton built with commonly used uh, pr rapid prototyping techniques such as uh, 3D printing uh, or laser cutting. And, you know, that's kind of basic thing. If you have uh, just a brief uh, rudimentary expertise in the field of uh, product design, form design, electronics, and programming, uh, you probably won't find uh, anything particularly challenging here. So, where is the catch? Why is this dude standing in front of the audience saying that this project is such a basic thing? And the answer is, I was struck by the realization that even though linking bits and atoms together has never been easier before, you really can't see much of a project linking new media technology and design here in Poland. And we know we're pretty decent at creating furniture, for example, and stuff like that. But it's like um, this uh, open source DIY electronics revolution has never arrived here. And how come? Uh, why it's like that? I think that mainly the problem lies in communication. Because, you know, we've got all of those very talented designers, well-educated engineers, and world-acclaimed programmers. But the problem is that they got, those guys are like, you know, sitting in their own cubes. They don't communicate with each, with, with each other very often. They're kind of uh, even distrustful. And, you know, that's, that's a thing that's kind of... Uh, a wider problem here in Poland, this problem of openness and um, of cooperation. And, um, you know, the Decaudion, I hope, is an example of overcoming this problem. I mean, the Decaudion was born thanks to those conversations between people with different skills, with different expertise, um, and it's, you know, like blending all those cubes together, um, intersecting them, and uh, you know, that's where inspiration, a main theme of today's event, comes. Because there's hardly anything more inspiring than a collision of two different minds, of two different people with different experiences and knowledge. And during such collision, 
a really vast amount of creative and uh, the problem is though that uh, we're lacking of spaces for such collisions to occur and um, a place where those different people could meet could talk together and eventually could work together on some projects I'm, I'm not saying here about other decaudians because you know that's a kind of crazy geeky uh, musical experiment but uh, if you provide those people those talented people with um, basic tools like 3D printers, open source pl plotters, razor, laser cutters, bunch of electronics, soldering irons, etc., you really could expect great things to emerge. And I'm, uh, you know, the real solutions for uh, problems of our ever changing world. Um, what's more, <coughs> you can think of this as a good investment because. Creating such space, commonly uh, called as media lab, uh, is um, very yeah. It's, it needs very low uh, in, uh, low um, uh, uh, input, but it could provide really great great outcomes, uh, even financially. Maybe I'm being naive or idealistic here, but uh, I hope that even though the decaudion is not a spectacular invention nor it's a second iPhone that would earn zillion of dollars or whatever, I hope it still has some inspirational value. And I hope that some of you received the message, and if you're somehow connected with companies or institutions that could provide support for creating such spaces I've mentioned, really should consider to do so, because, you know, it's really worth it. And now is the time. Thank you.